I'm here with um, uh, Phil Shelton, and uh, we're, we're going to be um, uh, recommending that, that uh, uh, Phil become an elder uh, at the next uh, church meeting. And so we wanted to make sure that people could get to, to know him. So I thought I'd ask you a few questions, Phil, if that's all right. Phil, tell us, um, tell us a little bit about you. Pro probably let's start with how did you become uh, a follower of Jesus Christ? Okay, so uh, I grew uh, up in a, a small village in Cambridgeshire next to an American Air Force base. So my parents were both Christians, had a background um, with uh, evangelical churches and Anglican churches. And in our village, it was quite nice. We had an American Baptist church <coughs> just at the bottom of the road in the village. So when I was very young, we became very involved in that. That was, that was an amazing experience. And I remember at the age of 11, um, uh, really sensing that uh, Jesus was, was calling me to him. And I, I remember the, the walk up with my dad to the pastor's church at the top of our village road, sat in his kitchen and um, prayed a, a prayer of commitment at the time, which was the start of my Christian journey and was very involved in the church there and also with, with the Sunday school growing up. And, and so tell us the story from, uh, from, from there on. So um, tell us a little bit about what, what, what happened to you, what line of work you've got into, family and stuff like that. What about work, first of all? Okay, yeah, so um, when I was uh, at school, I really enjoyed biology. So um, I decided to do a biology degree, so I quite enjoyed that subject. So I went to uh, what was uh, Trent Polytechnic at the time, Nottingham Trent University now, which is on my CV. But, <laughs> um, so yeah, I did a, a four-year course there, and that was uh, a basically, uh, a, it had kind of placements on the course. So you did three six-month placements during the third term and the summer holiday. And one of those, I did a research project down in London at the National Institute for Health Research in Mill Hill, which I really enjoyed. So I thought, well, this is fun. I quite enjoy research. So I applied for a few uh, PhD places and got one in Leicester, um, which was actually applied to do one with Alec Jeffries, the, the guy who did the mm. DNA fingerprinting. I was a little bit early. So apparently that got, that got uh, lost in the mix. But I did one in the lab next door to him and really enjoyed that. That's where I met Ursula. So I was actually doing some demonstrating for the medical students as part of that. And Ursula was in one of the groups then. She was also involved in the Christian Union there as well. So that's how I met Ursula. Then uh, once I'd finished that, I did a, a couple of years as a postdoc, which is just a, a kind of research type job, and then got a job at AstraZeneca in, in Loughborough. And I worked there for nine years, and they, they shut down. So the whole industry was kind of changing. And then uh, pre just after that, I did four years work with the NHS. Um, then I did a, uh, an MBA. And then I did a, a one year kind of uh, business manager type role here in, in OB and I've got a job with Philips Healthcare using technology in, in the health system. So a bit of an interesting journey from pharmaceuticals into, mm. into the health sector. So tell us about the job with, with Philips. I, you're about to get on a plane now and fly out to Scotland and so on. Yeah. How's that going to work with, with, with being an elder? Um, uh, how, does, how does that all, all come together? Okay, yeah, so my, my kind of current role I think is going to evolve, it's going to change. Um, but currently it's, I mean, the way, way things work uh, at the moment, I'm looking after the whole of Scotland. Uh, with, with my role, which might sound a huge job and, and a lot of travelling, but actually a lot of it's using quite quite effective video conferencing. This is one fairly strategic trip at the end of a programme, so I need to go up there for two days just to do a bit of networking and because uh, and, and, we're a partner with this particular programme. But it's actually fairly strategic trips up, so I'm not travelling all the time, but the ones that, the trips I do do are, are quite effective and uh, the rest of it's kind of email and, and video conferencing, so it's quite, a, quite an effective way of working. Tell us about the family. So you're married to Ursula, you've got two boys, uh, Caleb and Reuben. Tell us, tell us about them a bit. Uh, Ursula's a, a GP, so she's working in OB, so just down the road, which is great. And uh, my two boys, Reuben's a kid with high school at the moment, so he's year um, eight, going into year nine, and hopefully after that he'll move on to uh, Beecham College, where Caleb is right now. So Caleb's in his first year of GCSEs, working quite hard at that in, in amongst doing uh, video games yeah. and, and various other things. But yeah, they're, they're good boys, they're, they're, they're really plugged into the church and that's just great to see that, to, to be honest. Um, you know, looking, looking around at some of their friends and, and some, of the, some of the stuff that goes on, it's just great to see them actually really plugged into church and they really enjoy going. And for me, that's just such a, a great thing to be involved in that and see them growing up. 
in the church, you've got involved in a, a number of different things, but, but, but tell us about them. Tell us some of the things that you're, you're doing in the church family. Yeah, so uh, me and Ursula run a, a, a 20s group. So these are kind of young adults that maybe have not gone to university or, or come back from university or, 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 or some young adults that, that have taken a career path outside of that or even are just doing placements in Leicester for a year or two. It's a, it's, it's a great group to be involved in because it's, it, there's a fair bit of movement in the group, so people come and go. I mean, people are getting married or, or people come for, for short placements to Leicester, move on, or they go travelling. Um, and we've had kind of anywhere up to 40. Currently, we're down to about 15. Mm -hmm. But it's just a great time just to open our house up, to, to, to share the gospel, to study God's Word, and just to see some of the, the young people really delving into God's Word and really enjoying that and hopefully growing in their faith. And we just hope that some of the experiences they have here as part of the group will, will go with them in the rest of their life as, a, as, a, as just an example of, of gospel living and actually sharing, uh, sharing, uh, <coughs> sharing, sharing God's Word with, with other young people. Um, and you've, you've done other stuff as, as well uh, in the yeah. church? So um, I help out quite a bit with the, the Hungerton camps. So Ursula and I have been involved with that over the past three years now on the Camp Advance, which is the teenagers. Uh, the kind of older teenager group. So I also help now with um, some of the kind of uh, setup and maintenance of the camps as well. So involved in the kind of tents and things, and also just just organising and helping Tim and Audrey really just take some of the pressure off, um, thinking about development of the, of the site and and just how how the thing operationally runs as well, which has been quite fun. So really getting into the kind of DNA of how the how the camps work. So that's been great as well. So I'm going again this year um, to to be involved in that. I uh, also involved in the music, so I really enjoy that. So um, I just love playing uh, keyboards and Hammond organs and things, and bring those along fairly regularly to church, and just like to be creative with that as well. So hopefully, it helps uh, just just people to, to to worship and connect with God through uh, through kind of sung through singing really and singing truth. And I'm just really passionate about that, so I really really enjoy that as well. Tell us. Uh, so we haven't kind of rehearsed this. So this is probably a little unfair. But what it's a question I love to ask people: What is God kind of on your case about at the moment? What What's He talking to you about? What are you thinking about with Him? Can you answer that at the kind of the drop of a hat? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm kind of going through a, a book called Loving the Way Jesus Loves. Oh yes. Yeah. So that's great. So I'm, I'm a few chapters into that, and that's that's just been been great really and really challenging me looking at God's Word again in in a different way so the the book takes various passages and, and concepts from, from from God's Word and sort of kind of turns them around a little bit to looking at how how the, it's all about actually loving and loving others and it's a really challenging book actually and I think growing up in a family with with teenage boys is, is quite challenging um, it's just shows you how unloving you can be at times so that's that's a real challenge. And I think God's working through me to just to just to be more sacrificial and more loving and less selfish, and that doesn't change. And I think what I'm finding is, and again, I'm going through through Romans uh, at the moment as well. So I'm up to Romans five, reading a, a, a book there ba based by a, a commentary based by Tim Keller, mm. which is great. And again, it's just it just kind of shines out about. Um, about what faith is, about trusting Jesus, about love, and all these things just kind of really hitting me at the moment about um, how um, unloving I can be. But actually with Jesus Jesus with me and in me, with, with God's Spirit, I can actually uh, turn that around and uh, can really love people more, my family, the, the church, the, the groups I'm involved in. And it's just a really a good, challenging time at the moment. Now, with Steve Borden, uh, we, we did a slightly unusual thing because we... Uh, we recognised that here were a couple of guys who we thought would make good, good elders, but um, uh, who had actually asked, can you give us a bit more training, a bit more help? And so we we seconded you to the eldership, gosh, quite a while, probably since last summer. What You've been kind of observing things and so on. What, what's your heart for Knighton? What, what, are you, what are you passionate about? What are the things that you'd love to see for our church family? Yeah, so I think one thing we've been working on since uh, the summer is just looking at kind of the vision of the church, really. So I think, you know, it's a, it's a very busy environment. There's lots of groups. There's, there's kind of, you know, we have to resource all, all the activities that go on in the church. But actually, what's been quite nice is just to step back a little bit and look at, look at a, a, a bigger vision for the church, really. Where are we going? So the, the word growth comes out quite a bit in that, really. So I think for me, what I've been thinking about and the vision for, for the church that I hope I would have with the elders would be to kind of grow it in a number of directions. So it would be to grow, 
grow in numbers, which I think is a really important thing. We're, we're there to, to reach out. Uh, the Bible talks about uh, God's, God's sheep, Jesus' sheep. And we're there really to, to reach out to those, to just present the gospel to them, to let the Holy Spirit mm. touch people's lives. So for me, it's very much a vision of how do we make our church uh, more accessible so people can come in, hear the gospel. And I was really touched by, um, I remember uh, uh, a year or two ago when um, Dave Burke came down and it's mm. something that stuck in my mind about just actually getting uh, God's word, just actually speaking it, getting it into people's, people's minds and hearts really. So that's a real passion for me is how, how do we do that? So we've been thinking about a number of ways of doing that through technology and various other ways, but just, just to really open our church up so that people can hear God's word and be transformed by that. And I think growing deeper as well. So in a Western culture, uh, I think uh, we, we, we have a tendency to be quite reliant on, on, on things, uh, material things, on created things, but actually uh, the gospel kind of transcends through that. So we've been quite challenged, I think, haven't we, Andy, in the, just in some of the eldership meetings about how, how, about our giving and how we should use our money, how we should use our time, and actually being more, more sacrificial. So it kind of really hurts a little bit sometimes to, to be part of God's family and just trusting. So when we do that, actually we start to trust a little bit deeper and, and hopefully we can see the gospel really, really shining and working through as it's supposed to do. Phil, look, finally, you, um, let, let me just ask you some questions about you. What, is, what does Phil Shelton love to do um, when he's got nothing else on? What are your kind of interests and passions? At this time of year, I like growing things. So I um, see the garden. Yeah, I've got I've got cucumbers and rhubarb and potatoes. So I do quite like having a bit of a dabble this time of year in the garden. I like rugby. It's towards the end of the season now, so there's two two semi-finals on uh, on Saturday. So if if you tune into those if you get a chance. <laughs> Leicester Tigers are playing Bath at five o'clock, um, so I do like rugby. Um, what else do I like? I love music. I love I love I love kind of playing my keyboards here at home and at, at church and getting involved in that. Cycling. I'm back in. It's a good time of year to go cycling in, so I really enjoy that. Um, just lots of things actually. I like lots of different different bits and bobs really. But technology as well. So I've got solar panels on the roof. And, oh, you? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're getting a, a, a Nissan Leaf uh, test car for a week. On Sunday, which Fantastic. will be quite fun. So you'll be moving stealthily yeah. around the. Yeah, <laughs> so I like to, I like, you know, kind of cutting edge technology yeah. and things as well. Phil, thank you so much. Have a very safe flight. You. Uh, if you want to ask him uh, any questions, you've, you've got time, I guess, before uh, the meeting to do that. And, and do pray for Phil and Ursula and the family, won't you? <laughs>